Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 2K, where we're continuing our discussion of mutagens by focusing on the very distressing and concerning question of, well, what should we be worrying about? So we're going to talk about mutations and birth defects. We're going to talk about Spider-Man. And we're going to discuss what mutagens and exposures should we and shouldn't we worry about. Now, we often think that pregnant women are very vulnerable to fetal damage from mutations, and that pregnant women should be sheltered from any environment that could increase their risk of mutations. But in fact, exposure to mutagens during pregnancy is not an important cause of birth defects. And that's because very few birth defects are due to mutations. Certainly are due to mutation, not to mutations that occurred while the fetus was developing. Most birth defects aren't caused by mutations at all. They're caused by accidents of development, just chance events during embryonic and fetal development. They're caused by physiological stresses and by chemicals that interfere with fetal development. These chemicals are called teratogens, distinct from mutagens. All of these are processes that directly interfere with fetal development, not by causing mutations. If we really want to reduce the new mutations that we pass on to our children, instead of shielding pregnant women from mutations particularly, everybody who might someday have children should avoid exposure the mutagens. Seems simple, but in fact, even this is probably, you know, not that big an effect because most of the mutations that we give to our children aren't new. They're mutations that we inherited from our parents and they from their parents back through the generations. And most new mutations are due to background events we can't control. Only a small fraction of new mutations are due to mutagens in our environment that we potentially could control. Now, here's somebody who's been exposed to an environmental mutagen. This is Peter Parker, who became Spider-Man, so the story goes, by being bitten by a radioactive spider. Um, after that spider in a laboratory had absorbed a, quote, fantastic amount of radioactivity. And this somehow gave Spider-Man his superpowers. Now, Spider Peter Parker should have known first that absorbing radioactivity, being exposed to radioactivity, won't make you or a spider radioactive. It might damage your cells, but those cells won't become radioactive. So the spider was unlikely to have been radioactive at all. Second, if the spider bites Peter, so the spider bite is, transmits such a tiny fraction of the spider's body that the radioactive dose to Peter Parker would have been very tiny. Spiders have very potent venom, so even a very tiny amount causes a great deal of pain and tissue damage, but it, it's still a very tiny amount. And third, somatic mutations won't change your whole body. Um, you know, it's Peter Parker might have suffered few mutations in his finger. That's it. It's not going to change his whole body. It changes single cells in the adult body. These are somatic mutations. So what do experts worry about? Well, they worry about acute radiation sickness and toxicity from chemotherapy. This is not due to mutation. And they worry about cancer. So we'll talk for a few minutes about these. First, acute radiation sickness and chemotoxicity. These are caused by the high levels of DNA damage that are used to preferentially kill cancer cells, or they can be caused by accidental exposures to toxic chemicals or to high doses of radiation. They kill cancer cells because the high levels of DNA damage prevents cell, cell division, preventing DNA replication, 
which is more toxic to cells that are dividing rapidly than to, which is characteristic of cancer cells, than to most normal cells, which are dividing slowly or not at all. The effects of radiation and these chemotherapeutic chemicals, DNA damaging chemicals is what they are, are similar whether you're dosed with it deliberately to cure cancer or accidentally because of some sort of mistake. But the effect that's of concern is not mutations, it's the actual toxicity due to the dying cells in your body. For cancer chemotherapy or for accidental exposure, the cells that are most sensitive, apart from the cancer cells themselves, are cells that normally replicate a lot. Blood cells, skin cells, hair follicle cells, and these are responsible for all of the distressing symptoms of cancer chemotherapy. Now, the other thing that experts worry about with mutagens is the risk of cancer. As we're going to discuss in modules four or five, cells become cancerous because of mutations. And that's why mutagens are also carcinogens. Chemicals that damage DNA will both induce mutations, they will kill cells, they will increase the rate of mutations, and by doing that, they increase the rate of cancer being caused because cancer is caused by mutations. In particular, cancer is caused by mutations that disrupt, disrupt the regulation of cell division, causing cells to grow when they shouldn't. Radiation and chemotherapy chemicals and other mutagenic chemicals can increase the chances of these mutations. So in the last lecture when we talked about how ultraviolet light like sunbathing increases the frequency of mutations, that's also why sunbathing increases your risk of skin cancer. Now we think of, we're warned about um, all these articles in our um, Sensationalist newspapers are saying, ah, mutagenic chemicals, you have to worry about chemicals in your food. And we tend to forget that, really, well, everything is made of chemicals. Chemical is the name for the, the physical substance of the world that we live in. Everything, including all of our bodies, is, of course, made of chemicals. These advertisements are often worrying about, oh, man-made chemicals. They're the really dangerous ones. But, of course, much of the mutations that we experience and the mutagens in our environments are natural mutagens. Many of the mutations in our bodies happen because of naturally occurring reactive products of our own metabolism. Sunlight, which is extremely natural, it's a very potent mutagen, so is nicotine and the tars in tobacco. These aren't man-made chemicals. Um, furthermore, there's very few chemicals, actually, that directly damage DNA. Um, chemicals have all kinds of effects. Many of them will interfere with DNA replication if the dose of the chemical is high enough, and interfering with DNA replication can cause mutations, but this is true of almost every substance in the world, including oxygen. So, the Daily Mail is an example of a newspaper that's making a lot of money by having screaming headlines about things that will cause cancer. Um, red meat does cause cancer. Abortion triples your breast cancer risk. The Liberal Democrats cause cancer, as does Facebook. Really, is it worth worrying about any of this? So what should we really worry about? We should worry about factors that we can change, not about background causes of mutation that are beyond our control, and we should worry about the factors that make a big difference, not about tiny traces of possibly mutagenic chemicals in our food, but about the big things. Here are some examples of what we should worry about. We should worry about cigarette smoking. We should worry about major mutagens in our indoor environment, of which two are smoke from cooking fires, These are important in underdeveloped countries, um, especially for women in, in kitchens where they have to cook over fires. And 
about in Western environments, we should worry about the other major contaminant that causes cancer in indoor environments, and that's radon gas. Many of our basements are accumulating radon gas, and it can be as important a mutagen as cigarette smoking. Finally, as you might have guessed from the discussion of how ultraviolet light causes cancer, we should worry about exposure to solar radiation. So put on a hat, slap on some sunscreen, clean out the smoke from your house, stop smoking cigarettes if that's something that you do. These are things that are going to make a big difference. Now coming up next we're going to shift gears and Instead of thinking about the ways that mutations might harm us, we're going to think about the role of mutations in the natural world, in particular the role in evolution. We've said that all natural, all genetic variation arose as mutations. All of evolution was dependent on natural selection using genetic variation that arose by mutations. And we're going to take a couple of lectures to think about how mutations are accumulate in um, evolutionary time and how we can use the accumulation of mutations to get a better understanding of how evolution works. I hope to see you there.